Good Life, Great Careers podcast. This is episode number two uh, of our podcast series. My name is Brian Savick. I am the Director of Workforce Training and Development. Here with me is my co-host, uh, Caitlin Betts. She is the Director of Talent Acquisition for the state of Nebraska. Now, the purpose of this podcast is to help shine a light and bring attention to all of the great career opportunities within Nebraska state government. A lot of people don't realize Nebraska state government is one of the largest and diverse employers within the state, especially when it comes to career opportunities. So we want to help you know, shine a light on that and let people know about that and hopefully uh, encourage folks to begin a career with state government. Currently, actually, there's around 600 open positions within state government. And so there's a lot of opportunities that are out there, ranging from game and parks to law enforcement to uh, Uh, public health, nursing, public relations, just to name a few. And we want you to stay tuned to the end of the podcast. Uh, Listen all the way through because if you're interested in a career in state government, we're going to go into that uh, and and tell you how you can do that at the very end. So be sure to stay to the end of the podcast uh, today. Um, In each episode, what we're going to do to help kind of shine that light on the opportunities and the different career paths and the stories that are out there of uh, of our state teammates, we're going to invite uh, different state teammates on to share their own story, their their own journey within public service, and uh, just so they can share their insights, their experiences, any tips they have, and maybe opportunities within their own agency as well. And so I'm really excited about this episode today. Uh, We have a great guest lined up. We have Travis Shepler here. He's the Assistant Division Administrator of the Law Enforcement Division of Game and Parks. And so um, I'm sure he has some really interesting and fun stories he's going to be able to share with us, and we're excited to hear uh, uh, his, his experience and journey, not only to state government, but then uh, within, within state government. So Travis, thank you for joining us, taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, so yeah, just to start bet. off, if you can let us know, uh, who is Travis Shepler? Just tell us a little bit, a bit about yourself. Well, I'll try to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, uh, like you said, I work for the Law Enforcement Division with the Game and Parks Commission. Uh, I've been with the state of Nebraska almost nine years now uh, in a law enforcement capacity. But I started with the state of Nebraska actually back in, I think, 2002, working for the wildlife division at the Game and Parks uh, okay. while I was in college. And uh, once I was done there, I started actually started my law enforcement career with the Missouri Department of Conservation, uh, okay. spent almost nine years there. And uh, you know, so about 18 years into my public service career in a law enforcement capacity. So what drew you to the Game and Parks Commission? Well, it's always been, you know, kind of a career path that I was interested in, you know, from you know, way back in elementary school, always out or always interested in the outdoors, hunting and fishing. Uh, uh, when I lived uh, in Indiana, when I was uh, younger, I actually came across a fisheries biologist and huh. that's what piqued my interest. And, and uh, you know, just with my outdoor, uh, you know, experiences and, 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 uh, I guess, desire to work outside, that was kind of the, that's kind of what drew me to that path. But, uh, um, and I think that's a pretty similar background with a lot of the people that work, uh, you know, with the Game and Parks Commission. So I know you mentioned you started at Game and Parks a while back. What was your first position? Yeah, so I, uh, my first position with the Game and Parks was, I was, I worked for a private lands uh section within our wildlife division. So I helped private landowners develop wildlife habitat on their property and help manage uh, what's currently known as the Open Fields and Waters Program uh, across uh, southeast Nebraska. So uh, if you can tell us a little bit about your agency, about Game and Parks, and just the different divisions and responsibilities that the agency has uh, in in, in the ways they service the, the public. Sure. Well, the Game and Parks Commission is actually a really diverse uh, state agency. We, uh, you know, our mission uh, uh, in a nutshell is is uh, to uh, manage the state's fish, wildlife, uh, parks, and outdoor recreation resources. So that's a pretty broad mission. And to accomplish that, we have, you know, a wildlife division, obviously a law enforcement division, uh, fisheries division, uh, parks division, and, and a, a handful of of other support divisions within the agency. So uh, we all, uh, you know, we work towards that mission of, of, uh, of, uh, you know, Nebraska's natural resources, but we all have really pretty diverse jobs. How did you make the transition over to the law enforcement side of game parks? Yeah. Interesting. uh, I guess 
what I feel like is an interesting story. My, my goal, uh, you know, like I said, from when I was younger was to be a biologist and that's what I worked towards, you know, both in my academic career, but also in my, uh, you know, uh, work experience was becoming a biologist. So starting out with private lands, uh, I, you know, I had a really great experience there, gave me great experience working uh, with some of the private landowners and, um, that actually transitioned to working as a biologist for, for on our feral pig project. Oh, back, interesting. Yeah, like in 2003 or four, I believe that was. Yeah. And, uh, but I'll be honest, uh, I loved what I did, but there was just kind of something missing with that. I was still in college while I was doing these jobs, which was great. And uh, I just felt like I kind of maybe hit a dead end with where I was going and, and just wasn't having that fulfilling career yet. Uh, so I, I actually called up uh, uh, one of the uh, other assistant administrators who still works for us, Dwayne Arp, and, and uh, said, hey, can I do an internship with you guys? And, and uh, I guess, long story short, that's kind of what got me down the law enforcement career path. And when I, when I started doing that internship, it was, uh, it was game over. I knew exactly that's, that that's what I wanted to do the rest of my life so so what does a what does someone in law enforcement do in a conservation officer type position how is that different than some of the maybe more traditional things you would think of as law enforcement sure so uh actually the state of nebraska is pretty unique uh as far as our conservation officers are are concerned so i mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier that with the game and parks Mm -hmm. we deal with fish we deal with wildlife parks and outdoor recreation resources. So as a law enforcement division, it's our responsibility to, uh, you know, perform uh, law enforcement duties along those, uh, those diverse areas and education as well. You know, law enforcement's not our, uh, is not the only thing that we do, but um, so we do fishing enforcement, we do hunting enforcement, but we also do boating and parks enforcement, which is what makes us unique. So I'll take a state like Missouri, where I worked before as a conservation agent there. I only, I primarily only did uh, fish and wildlife enforcement. We didn't do boating. They had another state agency for that. We didn't do parks enforcement. They had another agency for that. But here, you know, we're tasked with all of those duties in addition to a variety of other, uh, you know, like I said, education uh, um duties, but we also, you know, assist other local law enforcement and other state law enforcement as well. So um, what's a typical day look like for you, I guess? Well, the good news is there's really not a typical day, and that's what <laughs> makes this job great. Um, you know, as a conservation officer, we have a very, very uh, a flexible schedule, okay. right? And it's very seasonal because hunting and fishing seasons are seasonal. You know, most people are only boating in the summertime, not all of them. Uh, and, and, and park season generally is, is kind of a spring, summer, fall type uh, season as well. So it really changes a lot. So, um, you know, in the, in the hunting seasons, uh, we, you know, our officers work, you know, when the hunting is good. So, uh, you know, can be a lot of early mornings, uh, you know, going out and, and interacting and checking hunters. Uh, same thing kind of in the evening time. So, uh, you know, you're, you're working maybe a split shift uh, okay. during the hunting seasons. And so, you, you know, you can go out and work in the morning, come back home, go back out in the afternoon, maybe work a little bit more even that evening. Uh, park season can be a kind of a, a late night, uh, late evening type uh, job or, where, uh, uh, you know, the boating can be. Uh, it just really depends on, on the time of year, but it can be uh, – you know, a morning through evening type of adventure. So it, it just really depends. There is no typical day. And, yeah. a, and, uh, and again, that's what makes it great. What's your favorite part of <laughs> your current job or one of your prior jobs? Well, I'll, I'll just, you know, with my current position, uh, you know, as an administrator, uh, I get to handle our, our hiring process. And, and honestly, that's, that's hands down my favorite part of this position but as a as a field conservation officer i i'm gonna have to say that uh, uh, uh working waterfowl season was my favorite you know you're out there uh interacting with with hunters you're out there watching the the ducks and geese fly and and as a as a duck hunter myself really enjoy that stuff and it just to, to be able to merge those two together is pretty great so if somebody would be if any of our listeners anybody is interested in 
uh, starting a career maybe with Game and Parks. And I'd, I've never seen a survey done. I've heard anecdotal evidence Game and Parks is the best agency to work for. <laughs> not throwing shade on any of the other agencies. I think you got it right. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I've never met an unhappy Game and Parks teammate. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they love their job. Right. Um, how, how could someone, uh, what would your recommendations be for someone who's interested in a career with your agency? Um, you know, and I know there's a, you said it's very diverse as far as opportunities go, but, but what recommendations or what advice would you give someone who's interested in starting out in a career? Yeah, great yeah. question. And, and I'm going to back up and say this absolutely is the best agency to work for. <laughs> I love the Game of Parks Commission. Um, and, and you're right. Most people do this. They get into the Game of Parks because they, they love working outdoors. They, they really care for the natural resources. And, and to have a job where you're able to do that, uh, it's just a really great thing. So, you know, the first thing I ask somebody that's interested in working for the Game and Parks Commission is, you know, what exactly is it that you want to do because we're such a diverse organization? So uh, is it law enforcement? Is it fisheries? Is it parks? Is it wildlife? Is it, is it IT? Is it, you know, another support type, type position? And then we really narrow it down from there. And, and uh, what I would recommend is uh, we have a great website. You can check out a lot of our career opportunities there to kind of hone in what you want to do or what you're interested in. And then you know, who we need to get you in touch with uh, as far as finding out more information on those specific career paths. You mentioned that hiring is one of your favorite parts right now. Right. Are, are you, what types of positions do you hire for? Right. So uh, I specifically take care of the hiring for our conservation officers and our law enforcement division. And, uh, you know, it's been a, it's been a really interesting uh, few years in hiring for us. Uh, uh, we went, you know, years without filling positions because, you know, most people retire at, at this job and, and we just didn't have, you know, any retirements for quite a while. Well, that's really changed in the last really five to 10 years. Uh, for example, we've hired 15 new officers due to just uh, mainly retirements in the last two years. And we're actually up to 25 in the last five years. And we don't expect that to slow down. So uh, it's been kind of a whirlwind, but it's been, uh, you know, a great experience. And, and this is just a, a, an excellent time to be looking at this career field. So what type of experience do you need to be a conservation officer? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I like to answer that. And, you know, when we're looking at our applications, and, and we get three, four, five hundred applications for each, uh, you know, hiring process that we do. And, and out of those, you know, we're generally trying to find those five or six people uh, to hire. So what we look at, you know, education, work experience, and any other type of certifications that you might have. That's kind of square one. So what that means is we, we really like to see somebody with a criminal justice degree or a natural resources degree. For example, I've, I have a bachelor's degree in fisheries and wildlife from the University of Nebraska here in Lincoln. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunities around the state and the country for those degree programs. Same thing with criminal justice. So, yeah, you know, educationally, that's what puts you ahead of, of, the, of the group, you know, if you have that degree. And then we start looking at, uh, you know, just uh, career type experience or work experience. And we really like to see people that have temporary experience with the game and parks or another state agency or a federal agency or they've been a law enforcement officer before. And that kind of leads into that third aspect of, of uh, if you are already law enforcement certified, that can kind of, you know, put you in the top of that group uh, for our hiring process. But uh, those are kind of the three main things. We also, you know, we really like to find people that have a, a diverse background in, in the outdoors. You know, they've hunted or they've fished or they, they enjoy boating or or spending time in our parks or, you know, hiking, some, something outdoor related. That's not a requirement, but definitely helps you out in our process. So for a new officer who's, who's coming on board, what type of training and development takes place before they're on their own? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting and a great process, really. So if you, uh, if you get hired as a conservation officer and you're not already certified as a law enforcement uh, officer for the state of Nebraska, you go out to the Nebraska Law Enforcement Training Center and go through the basic law enforcement academy. It's about a 16-week process right now, and then once you're, com once you're done with that, 
We actually have our own field training program, and that's another uh, 14 to 16 week process as well. Uh, the, the the field training program is great because it that's kind of where we teach you to be a conservation officer in addition to the law enforcement skills you've already learned at the academy. So we you know we teach you. Uh, boating, you get to you get to spend time on boats. We teach you how to do hunting investigations, wildlife ID, uh, you know, parks, fisheries, all that kind of stuff. And then you get to travel around the state working with other officers that are that are our field training officers. So you really get to see the state. You know, me for example, I was from southeast Nebraska, had not spent very much time out west. And during my field training program, that was kind of my first uh, experience getting west of, uh, I guess, Highway 81. So uh, <laughs> really enjoyed that. Do you have a favorite state park or recreation area? Ooh, that's a... Am I allowed to ask that? <laughs> <laughs> gotta, Are you allowed to answer? Got to phrase that or make sure I think about how I phrase that. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time working up at Branch Oak State Rec Area, you know, north of Lincoln here, uh, you know, Great camping opportunities, great fishing opportunities, uh, and and I I do I really like going up there. I mean, it, it, to me, it's very clear you you enjoy you have a passion for for your job and and for your agency. Um, what is the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning that that just keeps you going as well that that you just absolutely love about what you do? Right, you know, I think it's. I think a lot of that's just based in in my uh, you know passion for for our state's resources. I know that that may be a kind of a general answer, but you know I I really care about making sure that our natural resources are protected and that our that our hunters and fishermen and our outdoor users out there are safe while they do it. Um, you know, making sure that we're that we're providing a high level of public service to to our constituents is probably the number one uh, thing that motivates me. You know, they expect you know the public expects us to be out there doing our jobs, and 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 that that's really a driving factor for for me and for most of our officers. You mentioned that part of it is like boating regulations, mm-hmm. and that right. in the training that's part of what you're trained on. So right. do you get to go out like and patrol in boats or what does that look yeah. like? I mean, that sounds like a dream job to me. <laughs> it is a dream job. So uh, one of the great things about our jobs is most of our officers have a variety of watercraft uh, assigned to them. So for example, when I was in the field, I had my own patrol boat. We had a, a personal watercraft. Uh, we have kayaks, we have airboats, cool. we have, uh, you know, everything, everything that you could expect on the waters of this state, you know, we, we utilize those for patrol. So, uh, trust me when I say, you know, I'm out there on a jet ski patrol in Branch Oak Lake. I mean, there, I just kind of have to pinch myself to sometimes. <laughs> it's like, is this, uh, this is my job. This is amazing. So, uh, really great. So this is maybe a silly question, but what are you patrolling for when yeah. you're out there? Yeah, you know, uh, boating regulations are very similar to, like, traffic violations. Okay. Uh, most of them are safety-oriented, making sure that you have enough uh, life jackets on board. Uh, we have, you know, just like there's rules of the road, there's rules of the water. It's it's 90, 99% of it is safety-oriented. Uh, you know, boating under the influence is one of our big uh, jobs here uh, in the state, so we're, we're looking for impaired boating operators as well. What are some of the challenges you face? Right. You know, I would say, you know, one of our biggest challenges overall is just uh, uh, our staffing levels. I mean, we, yeah. like I mentioned before, we, we've hired a lot of officers, but we do have current vacancies. But overall, we're a relatively small uh, law enforcement uh, or conservation law enforcement agency compared to other states. So we expect our officers to patrol a large area. They're, uh, you know, they're available via phone calls uh, from the public basically 24 hours a day, uh, you know, every day of the week. Um, so uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's a wide area to cover with, uh, you know, a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot going on within your, your duty station. So are those areas based on geographic location or how is that split mm-hmm. up? Yeah, so... We assign our, our, or our duty stations are basically uh, designated by counties. So, and it just really varies a lot throughout the state. So some of our officers have three or four counties that they patrol. Uh, but, you know, you get over on the eastern part of the state where it's just more populated. We have more park areas. And, uh, you know, we, we have four to five officers that cover Lancaster County, for example. So some only have one. But, uh, 
it's primarily by county, but many of us have, you know, multiple counties that we cover. You mentioned the airboats earlier, made me think of the Platte River. Were you guys involved with um, the floods in 2019 and those efforts? Yeah, we were. Uh, you know, that's a, another huge part of our job is, is helping with uh, search and rescue efforts. Uh, so, yeah, we, we had you know, most of our, most of our boats, you know, along that corridor. And we were, we were bringing in staff from other parts of the state to, to assist on the Platte River. You know, I was, I was out in the, the Seward and Saline County area during that, helping uh, people get out of their homes. And, and yeah, it really, really is a huge part of our job and, and something that we, that we take a lot of pride in. I think that's one of the um, really impactful things about um, public service is the you know the opportunity to work in those critical situations yeah. that make such a big impact and yeah um, it's been interesting I think from a kind of an outside perspective of seeing how all the different agencies collaborated through that so it's interesting to hear kind of your part yeah it was it was a, a really a really great experience and and uh, you know when you when you when you maybe talk about one of the surprises of, of my job uh, or, you know, here with the state of Nebraska is a, a lot of us, and I guess this is speaking just from a conservation officer standpoint, we get into this because we want to help the natural resources, you know, but as, as, as you get into it and as you progress in your careers, you know, you're, you're really, uh, you're working less with the natural resources and more with the people of the state yep. and just seeing how much people care about, what they do and, and who they do it for has been uh, a really, you know, a really great thing and a really good thing to see. But just the interaction with the public, is it usually a positive interaction or is it, is it, how, how are, how, do, how does the public perceive? Yeah, a- absolutely. That's, uh, and actually I love answering that question because people ask us, you know, okay, you're, you're interacting with hunters, they right. have guns, right. you know, how do you do that? Well, the great thing about this job is, is the, the vast, vast majority of the people that we interact with are, are good people, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and they're happy to see us uh, for the most part. And, you know, we're happy to see them too. And the interactions are, are great, you know, and that's not always the case with, with other law enforcement. Um, you know, uh, you know, your traditional law enforcement, a lot of times are more reactive. They're reacting to sometimes bad situations. And as a conservation officer, we do those too, but we do spend a lot of time with, uh, uh, more just proactive type uh, law enforcement and, and interacting with with hunters and fishermen and and, and boaters and, and park visitors. So uh, the great thing is most of the interactions are really really positive and and uh, uh, but again we kind of uh, we kind of run into some interesting situations along yeah. the, the road too. So some of your interactions involve providing education out to the public. Yeah, we get involved in a lot of educational opportunities. Uh, you know, just right off the bat, we, a lot of our officers teach hunter education courses. We do boater education courses. Uh, we, we get into the schools uh, and, and, you know, we do, do a variety of, of programs just on wildlife or, or lakes or water streams, that kind of stuff. It just really depends. Uh, we do a lot of career, uh, you know, career programs as well, just kind of getting the word out on, on what we do. But I would say, you know, it's kind of that you know, 60-40 split, 40% more education type duties that we do as conservation officers. So, uh, you know, that's in, uh, yeah, that's a, an extremely important part of our job. Can you talk a little bit about, because you mentioned a few times about like protecting the natural resources and, and having a passion for that. What does that all entail? So, right. Yeah, it's a, that's a pretty broad question to answer. But, yeah. you know, um, when I when I say that, I kind of think of it you know, I try to break it down in a couple different uh, areas, you know, Uh, you know, protecting our state's wildlife, you know, we have seasons, we have limits on certain, uh, you know, wildlife species, uh, fish species, uh, and, and those, those limits and and regulations are generally uh, recommended and sponsored by our, by our wildlife and fishery staff. So, uh, you know, they put the regulations in place and it's our job to enforce them so that we're, that we can ensure that those wildlife populations stay healthy, you know, uh, for our future generations. That's a real, really big driving factor for most, for all of us. Uh, I can easily say all of us on that. And, and the others, just that, uh, you know, the, the safety side of things, a lot of our laws and, and regulations are safety oriented to make sure that the outdoor users are safe and, and that they, they can have a, a good time while they, while they enjoy being outside. 
Speaking of wildlife, what's the most interesting animal or wildlife that you've come across? Yeah, well, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out the mountain lion on that one, you know, uh, you know, over my career and, and I'm, you know, I've just hit, you know, over 20 years in, in the game and parks or conservation world, I guess. And, you know, 20 years ago, mountain lions, uh, uh, you know, weren't, aren't as populated as they as they are right now and and we're seeing we're seeing mountain lions move all throughout the state and i've had the opportunity to work you know in and in and closely on on uh, some investigations on those and we've got staff we have staff that do a really great job on the on the uh, biology side of things on making sure that we that we maintain good populations so uh, as, as far as my yes you know, probably my my favorite you know creature to to <laughs> to work with have you seen have you Seen them in the wild? Uh, no, unfortunately. You know, I've been on a lot of, uh, we get, we get, uh, you know, we get a lot of reports of mountain lions and we, we investigate, uh, you know, many of those. And uh, unfortunately, I, I haven't had the chance to actually see one in, in real life yet. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're yeah, beautiful. really are. I, I saw, was I think last year, there was a couple wolves even that were, yeah. uh, I think one was from a Yellowstone and another one came down from, uh, Minnesota, they had trackers. I yeah, guess. I don't, and I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. You know the exact details on that. But here yeah. recently, we've, we've had a variety of them move through the state. You know, we yeah. have moose, and I think we've had a oh, caribou really? show up, and wow. a black bear down in you know the southeast part of the state. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Pretty wild. It's incredible they journey that far. Yeah. Uh, so I guess maybe is that the answer to the most unique thing you've encountered? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it definitely shouldn't be. Uh. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, probably one of the most unique uh, things that I've done throughout my career uh, was was working uh, some special investigations on a paddlefish project, and and just to to have that opportunity to really be involved in a in a, a big investigation that really was negatively impacting the natural resources uh, was was uh, you know a really great thing to be involved in. Uh, specifically, you know, there was some. Uh, you know, paddlefish being taken unlawfully and being uh, sold unlawfully for their for the eggs, which were ultimately uh, being processed into caviar, and and there was uh, not only a nationwide nexus to that, but an international nexus to that as well. So, uh, I feel really fortunate to, that I had that opportunity to to be involved in that. That's something I wouldn't have thought of no. as right. being part of the you <laughs> right. know, conservation. Yeah, you know they uh, they say the the unlawful trade in wildlife is second only to the drug trade here in the United States, really? and and you know if they're uh, you know Nebraska is not uh, without you know those unlawful or commercialization type issues with wildlife. So uh, you know it's kind of an unknown part of our job, but something that we that we do uh, deal with on a regular basis. Um, if there's anything our listeners want to learn more about your agency, what are, how would they go about that if they want to learn more about Game of Parks? Right. So, uh, you know, we have a great website. Uh, you know, I think that's a good starting point. Try to find out, you know, what you're interested in, and then we can kind of narrow down who you're talking about. Given, given our office a call, we can route you to the right person as well. And I, I, that's just what I would recommend. Just uh, getting on the website, talking to talking to some of our staff. Well, we have staff all over the state, you know, in our parks and our wildlife areas too. So uh, just develop that interaction, and, and if it's something you truly have an interest in, then, uh, you know, just, just let us know, and, and we'll get you on the right path. I understand you're currently recruiting for temporary park workers. Is that something you would recommend out to anyone interested in getting in the field? Yeah, absolutely. You know, those uh, we have a variety of temporary positions throughout the agency, not only in our park uh, parks division, but uh, you know, fisheries and wildlife divisions as well. Those are great opportunities to to get some experience if you're looking for a more permanent position with our agency, uh, or just to to get outside and and have a have a you know a great experience during the summer. Ready for the hot seat? All right. Well, before <laughs> we wrap up, as mentioned, we wanted to uh, put you on the hot seat, have All a little right. fun before we end here. Um, so we'll start off easy. Awesome. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Yeah, I agree with that one. <laughs> Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Favorite sports team? Corn Huskers. Yeah, go Big Red. <laughs> All right. Well, we said not controversial. This wouldn't be for someone else, but Lake McConaughey or the Platte River? <laughs> Going to go with Platte River. 
I think you could go Love I mean, like either Matt way. Yeah, you, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most exotic car you've driven? Mm. A 1979 Caprice Classic. <laughs> I'm not very exotic. <laughs> we could ask you, know, most exotic watercraft you've. Ooh, good question. Um, we've got some new. We've got some new airboats that that really buzz up the river and, <laughs> and love it. So, cool. if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Ooh, I'd love to be invincible. <laughs> Yeah, time travel was possible. Would you go to the past or the future? I think we got to look ahead and go into the future. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Favorite outdoor summer activity? Uh, love to go fishing. Yeah, that's a good one. Salty or sweet? Mm, sweet. Go to karaoke song. Friends in low places. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, can't go wrong with that one. <laughs> amigos or Runza? Uh, ooh, somewhere right in the middle, but I'm going to go with Amigos. Yeah, they're both good. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Any lasting career advice that you'd like to end with? You know, just uh, uh, find what you find what you want to do. Uh, find something that you love and, and just start getting some experience doing it. Great advice. That's great advice. Yep. Well, Travis, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. Spending some time getting to know you and learning more about the career opportunities available with the Game and Parks Commission. Um, if anyone else is interested in checking out our great career opportunities, including those with Nebraska Game and Parks Commission, go to statejobs.nebraska.gov and click on the Find a State Job link. While you're there, you can also find links to our Nebraska State Job social media channels, uh, including Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. We'd love to have you follow us and learn more about our great careers. You can also check us out on YouTube. Just search for Nebraska Department of Administrative Services there on YouTube. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and you can be notified when our future podcast episodes drop. Again, on behalf of our guest, Travis, my co-host, Brian, and myself, Caitlin, I want to thank you for tuning in and learning more about great careers in the good life. <laughs>